Hey everybody, welcome to another Dark and Light video. Now today is going to be one of those videos where I'm going to be talking over the footage because I kind of felt like just recording the gameplay and then going it afterwards to kind of give a better commentary. But anyway, what we're going to be doing in today's episode is finally going to the ice dungeon, seeing kind of what we can do. And then, of course, grabbing some of those crystals to be able to upgrade our forging ability to be able to make the refining forge, which will equip us with bigger and better equipment, like saddles, which we will need for a lot of taming. But what we need to go there is brimstone, uh, like brimstone clothing, because these provide uh, protection against the cold because they're kind of heat. You know, elves are kind of like the heat. And then, same thing with the elves. The elves give the ice wind, which protect against the volcano, which we will go in the next couple episodes. But to make this brimstone, we do need some earth elemental cores that you'll see me killing on screen right now. So, of course, I had to kind of go out and gather those. But, yeah. Now, the only problem is, which I actually didn't realize, is you guys will see it later in the video. But we actually can't, like, fully, fully explore the ice dungeon because although this brimstone like suit protects me from the cold it actually can get better it's not just a single suit and those are like it's stats like permanent stats you can actually kind of like have upgrades on them which uh we have to work on in a later episode because with that we're gonna have to do like the refining blah 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 there's a bunch of other stuff to upgrade it so today is just going to be like a first look to that uh, but this is definitely a first step towards getting some better things, especially things like the Inferno Saddle. Uh, I mean, obviously, we're going to have to do that in a later episode, and stuff like that is really, really important. So basically, to make this Brimstone, I could technically just go run over to the Elves, go to some of the Guards, and kill some of the Guards, but that's no fun. I might as well make it myself, although it is kind of stupidly expensive. Those elemental cores, some of them are really easy. Like the dark ones are easy, you just mine that dark stone stuff. But these earth ones, you can only get from actually killing elementals. And you only get like one or two per. And you only see like two or three of them in like a giant field. So they're not easy to get. So I'll definitely have to make sure to take care of this armor. Uh, but along with the suit, of course, we're going to be bringing um, some like runes of warmth because it's cold. And then some, I think if I can make some, some regeneration ones, I don't know if I can make them though, because they're a little, they use some materials that are kind of annoying to get. Uh, I think like apples, it's like, it's so weird to get. I know I could probably just use my axe, but, um, and then of course some recall potions because yeah, in case I die, which I probably will, I'm going to use it. And of course we're going to be taking a creature that's not too special of course, got to cook up some food, as you can see on screen. But we're we're gonna be taking one of our Burundas most likely. I think if if I lose it, I might go back with a Nidhog. Uh, but the one thing that I have learned about these dungeons is, so of course, throughout the entire dungeon, there's different, like there's different temperature, and like once you get to a certain part of the dungeon, the temperature spikes. So in this particular case, I'm guessing the entrance and like the first little cave is gonna be all right. And then once we get deep into the cave, it'll like spike up to negative like 500 degrees. Now, if I run out of the cave, the cold doesn't actually go away. It slowly drains from the negative 500. So basically, once I go in there, I'm going to keep slowly losing health. So basically, the plan is, is to grab a bird, land it, go in there which I'm going to be using my Brunda, grab what I need. I ha I'll just have to leave the bird in a safe spot and actually come back for it because I will have to re recall. I mean, of course, I could just die there, but I don't want to risk that chance because then I don't know if a Yeti will come by or something. I'd rather just recall, die at the town, grab my stuff, and go back to save the bird. If I lose the bird, that's fine. If I lose all my gear, that's also fine, but it's a little bit less fine. But, of course, the ice dungeon or mountains are next to the humans, kind of to the left over here. I think we've traveled here before, but we kind of ran away because it was a little bit too cold. And, basically, this will be our first look at the actual ice dungeon itself. 
but we're not getting anywhere close to it because there's a boss at the end and there's a lot of super tough mobs to get through really our main objective is to mine as much of those ice crystals which you'll see in a minute uh as possible that's our main goal the ice dungeon isn't actually our main goal so here is the front of the actual ice dungeon itself and those little rocks up there are actually what gets the ice crystals those down there are kind of just mithril and uh light stone but yeah so you'll see me die here in a bit and you can see me here trying to find a safe place for my brunda and then that was a safe place right there but i actually couldn't get up the mountain kind of embarrassingly so i just left it out there and spoiler it does actually die i think a yeti comes by and kills it or something but as you can see the rocks over here it is just mithril and stone so of course we're not going to need those and i was really intrigued by uh you'll see in a minute though these really blue blue crystals i thought th this must be it it's not it's just light stone why why do you add such like a bright blue crystal if it's not even what i'm looking for uh so th those things up there are actually what i need now i haven't exactly explained what these frost cores what or whatever they're called they actually do so basically you eat them and it upgrades your like forging ability so you can get the refining forge which is kind of like a really weird mechanic but yeah they don't spoil i don't think because they didn't spoil when i played it and you have to get a good amount of them not it's actually not too many i think you need to get about 100 to 200 which isn't actually too bad surprisingly um you will see me here kind of throughout farm but real quickly let's get a preview actual act the actual ice dungeon itself so you can already see it's getting quite cold and i noticed that i think in each dungeon there's these special um goblins so this one is the frigid what is it F frigid frost clan and i'm pretty sure in the volcano one there's like a fist fire fist clan or whatever i don't even know so that one's kind of scary and there's also like weird spiders and these camps don't really do anything i was, I was trying to kind of like find a use for them it seems they're it seems like they're just kind of decorative and yeah i was kind of scared from it i was i was thinking if i jump in the water will that make me colder i have no idea but up there you can actually see there's a spider which is really really tough and i didn't realize a spat poison that stuff hurts so i pieced out but the actual dungeon i don't know if you guys saw it in the footage but right there like do you guys see that big hunk of ice right there we actually have to break that the first time i came in here i didn't realize that but we actually have to break that that's actually the beginning of the dungeon itself i was kind of you can see me here running around trying to find the entrance to the actual dungeon but we actually have to break that so you can see me here kind of just trying to dodge the stupid spider and it's getting colder and colder i'm losing more and more health so you can see me kind of like panic a little bit like okay i can't kill these things clearly i don't really know what to do and i tried to get back up but then i was like oh um unless i bring an animal in here to hoist me back up and recall Re recalled right before i died basically i'm if that spider poison would have actually killed me i would have just died on the spot right there but of course i would have grabbed my stuff but yep the poison and the cold got to me but of course i just respawned back at town grab my stuff but that was our first little look at that dungeon now we will go back once we can enchant our stuff which is what i call it but it's not really what it's called you can see me here the frozen crystal core i just ate some and you can see at the bottom forging is going up a little bit and slowly i will gather more and more of those and i'm actually going to max it out today i know a lot of people probably take a slow max at one at a time but you know what I'm just going to get the grinding over with. I'm going to get all crystal cores done today, and I will max it out so we can play with some things. Um, here you can see me back at the crystal cave with another Brunda. I'm pretty sure by now my first has already died. And basically, I'm just going to keep farming because, like I said, I need one or 100 to 200 of these. I'm just going to keep... Well, I, I, I have like weird past tense, but I did keep farming until I had enough because, of course, this is afterwards. And I actually tried to get my Brunda in here, and it was kind of it's kind of funny to watch. But yeah, uh, you can't get a Brunda in there, sadly. I would have been cool because I could kind of like fly through the dungeon, and I don't know what happened, but I think I lost my Brunda, or I might have died. Uh, but I did bring my Nidhog here with me, and of course, getting some more of these crystal cores, or frozen cores. Now I know this might be a little bit boring, but um. 
yeah, this is something we have to do. And right here, it's kind of hilarious. I didn't realize that I was going to die. I was just farming away, and I didn't realize how cold I was. Uh, but anyway, let's just skip through all the grinding. We have all the frozen crystal cores. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Frozen crystal core, it is right. And I grabbed about... I, I overshot it so much, because I, I was there for a good while. But I way overshot it. I definitely got enough but of course i could still technically use them for other crafting because i know some other crafting recipes use it that we i think the boss at the end of the ice dungeon you can make armor out of it and i think this this these frozen crystal cores uh have something to do with it so i don't know if i'll be able to keep them that long but we did unlock stuff like the refining forge the diamond uh some really really cool stuff that we'll be able to play with now we f of course have to first make it you can see here that I'm just kind of grabbing all the materials but this is really really exciting because this is basically like I said before this is the gateway towards the more advanced stuff like the Infernus saddle and I'm trying to forget what other saddles uh, maybe the Griffin I don't know. do we already have a Griffin I'm kind of losing my mind here a little bit but yeah then there's a lot of weird ones that you actually couldn't make yet but here is the reforging or uh, the refining forge. Now it's a, it's a lot bigger than I thought. It was I thought it was gonna be like another little tower just like the other one, but you no, know, it's pretty big. And here are the materials you can actually make these like obsidian cores and that the, whatever that yellow cube is called. And basically, you could also just use it as a normal forge. And I'm pretty sure it, its description is just that it's 50% faster than a normal one. Uh, now, here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to make some of those little, yeah, the square casts. We're going to make some of those. Now, those require a lot of kind of like metal, so mithril, iron, copper, I forgot which ones, and some light stone powder, which is, of course, just light stone ground up in these little things or at the bowl thingy. So, what we're going to be making today, which is really, really exciting because it's technically... I don't know if there's any other ones that I just don't know about, but it's the only gun in this game, which is called like the Blunderbass, Blunderbuss, I don't even know. <laughs> but uh, we're going to be making that, that's basically just a gun, and what it shoots is silver ammo. Now, the description for it is, it's good against werewolves, but really, I slowly kind of figured out what was the use of it. I don't think I did it in this episode, but I think I figured it out the next, is... It's good against the undead, basically. And I, I figured this out because I was taking it around while farming. And, of course, you'll see me once I make it shoot some people and some animals. And it does about 100 to 200 damage, which is okay. It's about what a swing of my sword does. But I was out farming at the hayfields. And a reaper came up to me. And I said, oh, might as well just shoot it, right? It did, like, 800 and 900 damage. So basically, what the point of it, it's not just a gun to use, it's actually specifically made for the undead. Now I said, I, th I don't know if the werewolves is a joke, because I don't know if there's any werewolves. Maybe the wolves, I don't know, but I, all I know is it is good against skeletons and reapers, which are the undead, which is really, really nice. And here you can see me make 35. By the way, one thing that I should add, this refining forge is ran by Fire Essence. That stuff isn't exactly cheap. Uh, but you can see me here dragging over these square casts, and we can make the blunderbuss, blunderbass. I can't see, my screen is kind of small. Of course, I did get the new monitor. I'm not 100% used to it. Now, the one thing that does kind of annoy me is to actually make the bullets, you need these meteorite, uh, these blue meteorite things. Now, I don't know where to find them. I have 21 from slowly gathering them from meteorites. But I don't actually know. I the, Later after this episode, I actually went to check to see. I couldn't find where to get them. Uh, but here's the gun. Honestly, I'm a little bit disappointed. I thought it would be like a big rifle, not a pistol. Which kind of disappoints me. But also, its animations aren't like super cool. Uh, the gun isn't even in the hand. I don't know if that's like an animation glitch. But it's actually not even in my hand, which is a little bit weird. Uh, but you can see me here. I'm going to shoot a person in the head real quick. It doesn't do too much damage to normal things, but it does quite a bit of damage to the undead things. So you can see 121. That's not amazing. Uh, but it's not, again, it's not what it's used for. It wasn't meant for humans and animals. I think it was specifically made as kind of like a counter 
to a lot of these bigger dark creatures. Uh, but guys, I know today we didn't do too much, but it did take quite a while. That's kind of why it's all in one episode. But don't worry, guys. In the next episodes, we'll be taming the Infernus Dragon and grabbing a lot of the smaller tames like bears, mastodons, you know, random things that we haven't gotten yet just to kind of get them uh, rounded up. So, guys, I think I'm going to end it off here. And, of course, we will also be playing with the more advanced refining stuff later in the future. You see me here, see me here shooting some Bargeshes. And, of course, I kind of run out of them. But, guys... Thanks for watching. Oh, one thing I forgot. I did do some little improvements on the house. You can see kind of the steps here. Uh, I added the little railings. I added the real, little railing on the wall so things can't get in. Uh, but I'll talk about that in a later episode. So, guys, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to link in the comment. That's the Brooklyn channel. And I'll see you guys later. God bless and goodbye.